In this video, we'll be setting up an MVI 69E MB TCP to read and write to a quantum PLC. We'll cover adding the module profile in RSLogix 5000, adding the MVI 69 MB TCP to the 1769 backplane in RSLogix, creating commands to exchange data to a quantum PLC, installing an add-on instruction, and going over some troubleshooting techniques. First, we'll install the AOP for the MBI 69 ENL family. You can either get the add-on profile off the product CD or by downloading it from our website. And this particular AOP will cover the entire MBI 69 E and L family. Double click the MP setup exe file this will launch the installer. Follow the prompts as it walks you through installing the AOP for the module. So first we'll open up RSLogix 5000. Select new project and choose your processor. I'm using an L33 ER version 20. I'll give the project a name. And once that's finished, I'll right click on the backplane and select new module. Filter modules by vendor. Uncheck everything and then check ProSoft. And you should see the MVI 69E MBTCP module. Select Create and give the module a name. Choose the correct slot number, the IO size. The number here refers to the number of words in a block that our module will be exchanging with the processor and the correct keying. Now, if you don't know the keying, you can just choose to disable keying. We'll open up ProSoft Configuration Builder now. Right click on default module and choose module type. Filter by MVI69E and choose the MVI69E MBTCP. Now, for this configuration, we'll be reading and writing to a quantum PLC. So first we'll set up the module, right click on the module and choose configure. This is where we'll allocate the read and write registers. By default, the module is set to read from our internal address 0 to 599 and write from our internal address 600 to 1199. This data will show up in the controller tags under mbtcp.data.readData starting at address 0. And the write data will go to mbtcp.data.writeData also starting at 0. The block transfer size needs to match what we defined for IO size under the module definition in RSLogix. And the slot number is the slot that the module is actually occupying in the rack. Here is where you can configure the server or slave port. For this setup, I won't be configuring the server. So now we'll configure one of the Modbus clients to pull data from a slave. Right click on client zero and choose configure. This is the section where we can configure the command error pointer and this will map the status of each command configured into your read data controller tags in RSLogix, starting at the value given here. We'll map it into register 500 using the last 100 words of the read data. The rest of the options can just be left at default for most configurations. Now we can configure the commands for the client. Double click on command and choose add row Press the Edit Row button, set Enable to Continuous, 
internal address is zero, which is the first address in our read data array. We'll be reading 24 words. The node IP address is the IP address of the quantum PLC that we'll be using. This will use a function code of three to read holding registers and the Modbus address in the device is 40,001. So we'll leave this at zero. We do this because the function code will automatically add 40,001 to the address that we enter here. Click OK and now we'll add a new row and edit it. This command will be reading output status of the 1x registers. Change command to be continuous. The internal address needs to be a bit address because the command will be reading coils or bits. We'll be using bit address 480, which is word 30 of our internal database. There are 16 bits in a word, so we need to multiply the word address by 16 to get the bit address. The reg count will be 10. The IP address is of the quantum PLC. We'll change the function code to function code 2. And the Modbus address in the device will be 10,001, which the function code will add to the value we give here. And we'll do one more command. So again, change enable to continuous. The internal address will be out of our write data zero in the controller tags, which start at 600, so we'll enter a value of 600 here. The register count will be two. The IP address of the quantum is the same as before. We'll change the function code to 16. The address we need to write to in the quantum is 40,201. So we'll enter 200 for the Modbus address in device. Again, the function code will add 40,001 to that value. So now that we're done with the commands, we need to configure our IP address. So expand Ethernet 1, right click on the Ethernet icon and choose configure. Change the IP address and the gateway for your application. If you're not sure about your local subnet, you can open up command prompt and type in ipconfig and you'll see your computer's IP address and gateway. So click OK when you're done and now we can export the add-on instruction. Right click on the module and choose export AOI file and save it to your desktop. Now in RS Logix we can import the AOI. Open up main routine, right click on rung 0 and select import rung. Choose the AOI file that we just exported from ProSoft Configuration Builder on the desktop. Click OK to finish the AOI import. And delete the extra rung zero. Now we can download the configuration to the controller. The IP address of my controller is 10.1.2.139. So once I find that, I'll select the processor. Download. Download again. And once it's finished downloading, I'll go into run mode. And this will initiate the MVTCP module. Next, we'll download the configuration to the MVI 69E MBTCP. To do this, I will right click on the module's name and choose download from PC to device. In the dialog box, we'll choose RS Who, and this will launch RS Links Classic. Expand the Ethernet 1, and then expand the target processor, 
open the backplane and select the processor, not the module itself. Click OK. Give the connection a test. And if the destination tag status is OK, we can choose download. The processor will store this configuration and then push it to the module via the backplane. This is beneficial in a disaster recovery situation. You can just replace anything that was damaged and download the RSLogix 5000 program to the processor and then our configuration will get sent to our card automatically. Now I'll go over some of the controller tags and the command error pointer. So open the controller tags and expand MBTCP. These data tags are where you'll see the read data or input to the MBTCP module and the write data for the MBTCP output to the field devices or the quantum PLC in our case. Now, if we look into the read data, we're seeing data that is zeroed out. This could mean that we are not communicating to the device or that we're truly reading zeros. We can check this by utilizing the command error pointer that we mapped earlier over in PCB. If we look at mbtcp.data.readdata500, we see three negative 48s. This translates that we have three commands and they're all failing or timing out. You can see all the error codes and their descriptions in the user manual. Now, if I plug the Ethernet cable back into the MBTCP module, these will clear, signaling that all three commands are now succeeding. And this concludes the tutorial. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call or visit our website. Happy training!